Hey folks, Willie Man Sam, man at the big green hat. I'm here at the Goldman Shipman Wildlife Sanctuary in the south uh, east part of Huntsville, Alabama. Exploring some of these trails that I haven't seen in probably close to a decade now. We've had a lot of rain recently. You can see the Flint River behind me just raging. I've already had to skip out on one trail because of it. But hopefully there's still a lot to see and there's some wildflowers around. Let's go see what all we can find. It's been a long time since I've been to this wildlife sanctuary. So long in fact that this wasn't concrete the last time I was here. Water is way up. Tons of little trilliums, not quite in bloom yet. The oxalis blue bloom still closed. The may apples here are now popping up like crazy. Like see synchro floral and other things. Oh, here's some tr twisted trilliums that are open. Just if I'm getting close to these guys without stepping on them. Flint River, the part of this property backed up to, is absolutely raging. After all the rain we had yesterday, and as such, the primitive trail that I was going to follow is underwater. Unfortunately, it was back there a little bit. There's no way you could follow it the river backing up into the property like this so the trail may be flooded here coming up separate trail. I have to check the map. You can see where the river gets up even higher than what it is. Floods through here and leaves debris everywhere. There's tons of spring beauty. That's what all the little white dots are, if you can see that in the video. Beautiful little meadow-like area. little spot through here where it's creeped up over the Flint River Greenway. Let's walk around to the side of it. This area is honestly one of the best kept secrets in Huntsville, I suppose. Lots of beaver dams on the north side of the property. And I used to come here to see the Tupelo gum trees. I'm not sure with the water as high as it is now. If I'll be able to reach those today or not. But we'll see. An unexpected little vine. This is the least trillium. 
and there's just a few of them in bloom. This guy's kind of late. He's already passed. But there's a neat little colony of them here. Here's one with some more pink on him. Not one I see too terribly often. Pretty cool. There's two interesting little mounds here and I'm trying to step carefully through the wildflowers. Come up and see them. I don't know what these two mounds are. Or were. Just the only two like them around. See the bright green of the fields there in the distance. What a quiet and calm little place. This field is full of sedges. I don't know what variety of sedges this is. And wild onion or garlic. And tons of spring beauty. And some hen bit that's not quite in bloom. See Leary up there, that purple that's just popped up. So much in such a small area. It's not quite obvious from the map. It seems like the trail should be there in, in the brush. You just walk along the edge of this old fallow field, this meadow, and it turns inland up here to the left. Well, I said it turned inland, but from the gander that I've taken, it doesn't look like it's going to matter too much here in a minute. The flooding from the river itself uh, is pretty much going to have us boxed in. And we're going to have to turn back regardless. Oh, there's lots of little deer track here. beautiful views like this. You can see the water up there just rushing off to the right which is inland and goes into the fields, the other fields. But I'll go up here to the top and see. Okay we're up on a, an old road abutment of what I believe used to be the Deer Run Trail. It doesn't seem to be well maintained or something anymore. Oh look how deep this is. Look at all the resurrection fern on this old tree. Beautiful. Water is so high and fast and powerful. We have sumac that's bloomed out here. Actually, I believe this is Buckeye. Not sure why I called it Sumac. Either way, here's the end of the line. This way, anyway. I'll go down to the edge. There's a rock bar trail that leads out to the banks of the Flint, but that would be impossible to reach. It's probably three to four feet underwater at least be no way to access it 
you can see the waters rushing in into the fields we're back out in the field and I'm going to try this other spot over here it's kind of a shortcut to get over to one of the other trails and see if there's enough dry land to navigate around influx of water at least and maybe salvage part of this hike there's just so much water we are at the edge of some of the Tupelo swamps while I'm here I might as well walk up and see a little bit of it can't get down into the heart of things what the really nice specimens are but these are pretty nonetheless just beginning to bud out here in the spring so this is the deer run trail through here and this water I can tell you is at least knee deep if not waist deep especially with that section there that's flowing fastest into the fields So I tracked down the deer run trail, it's done. But we may can skirt around the edge of this green field here and get back over. Just have to see. This is the paper maps that you can get from the kiosk. We started up here at the AJ and June Bantam parking area and took the the, uh, the Flint River Greenway down which is also uh, the Deer Run Trail and it runs the link almost the link to the property all the way down and comes out to see the bar trail the primitive trail or this part of it here was flooded and we couldn't get past so now that we're here we're going to try to um, navigate around the far end of this and come back down and maybe take the this other arm of the primitive trail so I know this will be flooded maybe see this section here and take the tall Tupelo trail back to the observation point another view of the, the flooding where the deer trail is beautiful views of Green Mountain there in the distance this wide open field and arcs on around we'll see if we can't join up with the tall Tupelo trail here and access a beautiful little pond down at the southern end of the property if not we'll find our way back well, it was a muddy slog through what looked like pretty dry ground. That water's still moving fast on down that way. It joins up with some of the Tupelo bogs, so I don't believe there's any way to get across that here. But we have come up to a trail sign. tall Tupelo trail that runs that way it looks pretty wet itself but we're gonna give it a go I just don't think there's any there's any way I'm getting that way without getting extremely wet The trail system to a degree seemed to have degraded back into wilderness. It's not really a problem for me. The problem is for trying to follow the, the trails laid out on that map. But we're just going to hike through here and get out to one of the observation points to see some of the, the stands of Tupelo trees. The land is very open, higher in elevation than the fields. So there's no water to contend with.
just deer droppings. <laughs> Here's what I came to see. You beautiful old tupelo gum trees. Buttress roots. Quiet, calm. Gonna head on up this way and see more of the swamp. Some resurrection ferns going on the butcher's area, the butcher's roots of some of the larger tupelo gums up there. I'll follow this as long as it lets me. I'm not going to pan to the left, but you can still see the water moving in from the Flint River. Those are just gorgeous with the ferns. In view from where we came from. The land and the forest here is still pretty open. Another pool of water over there in the field and the river beyond. This is the area that I want to see. There are times a lot of our trails can be extremely crowded. It's good to know the places to go to get away from those crowds and still be outdoors in places of beauty to find that peace and serenity. This is one of them. Always beauty in your backyard if you just know where to look. You can see how high the water gets here. Would be almost way steep on me. Water is flowing off into that little channel there.
Uh, I think I'm about to get boxed in here. This little back of water bayou, I think makes a hairpin turn. Tons and tons of deer track through here. Yeah, my guess was right. The beautiful bills and green mountain there in the distance. Water connects straight on up here to the other. No way across. down the other end of the slough now past more of these beautiful tupelo trees still mildly searching for a way across or where the trail actually is at this point that part doesn't matter so much to me it's just beautiful woods Back at the trail junction now. I'm going to attempt to follow it this way and see what I can find. If nothing else, the main foot of the greenway itself is just a hop over to the right if it gets impassable. But why not take a wander laser through the woods, huh? I passed another, another nice section of these trilliums stopped to photograph them. I'm on what I think is the trail. It feels wide like an old road pit somehow. More beautiful bayou over here. Swamps. There's tupelo gum trees. I think the trail heads over to the right a bit. But I wanted to come see the bayous. To blow gums for one more time. I'll make my way back to the greenway. It's beautiful in the fall here. The water is much lower. There's an orange flagging on that tree. And way back toward the start of this junction, there was one single orange flagging. And considering how wide this little path is, I do believe this is the trail. 
You see the flagging on this tree? Look at how the woodpeckers have had fun with this old stump. This is requiring frequent crossings. It looks like maybe we're up and out of the water a bit for a while now. There's where we're headed. There's where we came from. Another indication of I think of why I think I'm on the right track. I always keep something going as a backup plan. I always have a paper map with me and a GPS of some form of uh, reassurance that I am where I think I am, though I don't look at it often. But this little notch out from there with the little trail that I started to follow and changed my mind and came on down here to the bottom. We came up, messed around here, and we're coming back. And it's generally going in the right direction to sink back up with there. So, keep on keeping on. We're back behind those two mounds I stopped and explored now. While it's tempting to uh, just want to hop back on the the main trail there, I found what looks like an old road bed, which may actually have been the original trail. So I'm just gonna follow it along. But it shows you how close you are to to something here if you need to get back I'd like to say thank you to the the Flint River for the most part obliterating any evidence of any trails here and providing us some small form of wilderness here in the Huntsville area. Just get out and explore, folks. Just get out and explore. Come along and look for adventure, folks. Hope you have enjoyed all the scenery. I love finding the least trillium. It's one of my favorite wildflowers. Trilliums in general, but the least seem to be harder to find. And it's just been a joy walking along the edge of the river here. The sounds and everything, even though it's flooded. And getting to see the Tupelo gums again. Keep it flowing, folks. Stay wild.
Yeah, the river comes up fast. This is the overwash. So it was just beginning to come from the concrete from the other side earlier. Now it's completely overwashed this. It's not deep in at least, but tomorrow this will be impassable.